This presentation covers the Refugee Health Promotion Project in Washington State, including how it works and how it can assist resettlement agencies. So let's start with an overview of the Refugee Health Promotion Project, which I will refer to as RHPP throughout this presentation. RHPP is our state's unique model for supporting newly arrived refugee and other immigrant groups in King County who have high medical needs. It's a multidisciplinary approach and partners between state agencies, medical clinics, and resettlement agencies. Things that RHPP provides are pre and post arrival medical file reviews, consultation for complex medical cases, medical case management services, and health education. RHPP allows the coordination of complex health arrivals with a variety of part providers. The partners involved are all five area resettlement agencies, Harborview's International Medicine Clinic and Pediatrics Clinics, Refugees Northwest, DSHS Office of Refugee and Immigrant Assistance, and the Department of Health. And we will discuss more about each partner's role in the next slide. So this slide contains a lot of information um, specifically about who is involved in RHPP, who the partners are and, and their tasks and duties under this funding. Um, and so I know there's a lot to look at here and I'm gonna go over this very briefly, but you can pause and look at the um, this information in more detail. I think the easiest way to really conceptualize what RHPP is, is to put all of the partners into different categories. And there's th really three main categories. Um, and so we can go through those really quickly. You see sort of um, the agencies that are providing oversight and coordination of the grant. And those are the state agencies involved, which include DSHS, ORIA, and the Department of Health Refugee Health Program. So while the funding is through the Office of Refugee Resettlement, um, at the federal level, it comes through these two state agencies who really are kind of overseeing the entire grant and making sure it runs well. The two boxes in green here are what are called the contracted RHPP partners. And they're really the two agencies that provide services through this grant. Um, the first being Harborview Medical Center, which provides pre and post arrival complex medical file review, technical assistance and clinical consultation to partners, and also serves as a primary care home for new arrivals with complex health conditions. This other service provider is Refugees Northwest, which is part of Lutheran Community Services Northwest. They provide complex medical case management and health education to clients. So those are kind of the two places where you actually see um, agencies providing services. The final bucket is in the bottom right, and that's the referral partners and agencies. So if you're part of a resettlement agency, this is sort of where you fit in. And really what your role is is to refer clients into one or both of these service providers as needed. The other referral partner is King uh, Seattle and King County Public Health. They usually see clients, um, newly arrived uh, uh, refugee and immigrants, right after arrival or, or close to arrival, and so they may see um, some sort of complex illness that needs Harborview's attention or needs case management through Refugees Northwest, and they are also a referral partner as well. So let's go over who qualifies for RHPP. And if you're familiar with ORR eligible, eligible populations, this is the same criteria for eligibility. Um, as any other Office of Refugee Resettlement or, 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 or ORR um, funded program. 
So any client that you refer for services at Harborview or at Refugees Northwest must meet the criteria that you see here. And to briefly go over this, um, they have to have resided in the US for less than five years. Um, they have to have one of the immigration statuses listed here. And then for non-refugees who are eligible, the bottom bullet goes over the time in the US um, is based on the approval date for whatever status they hold. So now that we have a brief overview of what RHPP is, let's move into how resettlement agencies can utilize the services that this grant funding provides. Basically, as a resettlement agency, there are two ways that you can um, utilize these services. The first way is to coordinate care of complex arrivals um, with Harborview's International Medicine Clinic and Pediatric Clinic. Um, and so like I mentioned in the previous slide, this includes uh, clinical staff triaging cases pre-arrival and post-arrival, and also allows clients to establish care at the International Medicine Clinic or the Pediatric Clinic. The second way that you as a resettlement agency can use RHPP is to refer cases needing additional medical case management to Refugees Northwest, um, which is also known as Lutheran Community Services Northwest. And the reason that these two avenues were created is really to best serve new arrivals with complex health conditions and get them quickly established at a primary care clinic and linked to specialists, which is really Harborview's role. And it can also assist resettlement agencies with separate medical case management that can be utilized when you have clients that you are unable to serve. So sometimes um, this could be, you might have a client who speaks in a language that one of the caseworkers at Refugee Northwest speaks, and that might be a reason to refer them to that agency for case management. Um, if you have a lot of really severe cases that need a bunch of attention because they're very complex. This could also be a case where um, you either refer uh, one of those cases to Refugees Northwest for case management, or you refer a case with a little bit lower need but still complex needs um, to this case management agency. And really what these two avenues are meant to do is to help you as a resettlement agency have additional community supports for these complex health cases that you are serving. So another thing about RHPP, which can be confusing, is when and how the referral system works. And so I think it's important to sort of take a step back and think through all of the ways that a case might be referred to either Harborview or to uh, Refugees Northwest for ongoing services. Um, and, and I'll point out really what parts of this timeline might be from a resettlement agency and which parts might be from a different referral partner like um, the King County Public Health Department. So you might refer a case um, pre-arrival based on their biodata review, and this is really likely to Harborview um, to see if the case needs uh, uh, primary care at Harborview specifically because it's complex. You might also refer upon arrival if you uh, don't have pre-arrival paperwork or much information to go off of, but upon arrival maybe the case has documents from overseas or you finally get their overseas um, health records, and that is another point that you could refer to uh, to Harborview for ongoing um, medical care. Another place that might be a potential point of referral that's not through a resettlement agency is at the domestic health screening exam at public health. And so if you um, don't really have any pre-arrival data that indicates the case is complex, um, or you don't see anything upon arrival, this screening exam is really comprehensive and 
they might catch either a complex medical issue that really needs Harborview's attention, or they might catch a case that needs additional medical case management that can be provided through um, Refugees Northwest. So that's another point of referral. This could also happen post-arrival after being seen at a local clinic. Um, again, if, uh, you know, if an arrival doesn't have any indication of being complex, they're likely going to be seen at a community clinic, um, but maybe something comes up after they are um, seen at that clinic and they may need additional care um, and be switched to Harborview for that care, or they might need additional um, follow-up through Lutheran's uh, Refugees Northwest program. Another point of referral could be the end of the RMP period when your um, caseworkers are closing out the case. That could be a point where they see that there's an additional need, um, particularly for the medical case management piece through Refugees Northwest, but also possibly um, there could be a, a, an occurrence or knowledge of a complex illness that's brought up at this time. And then we kind of enter the last three items here, which are really beyond the 90 days of resettlement services and most of the services that your resettlement agencies are going to provide. So there could be a point of referral at the civil surgeon exam, which occurs at uh, the public health department at one year. And in that case, the resettlement agency really isn't involved. It's, it's something that public health is gonna catch and refer either to Harborview or to um, Refugees Northwest uh, on their own. There could also be a case where there's an urgent medical need over a year after arrival and the case comes back to your agency for assistance. And that could be a point that these referral pathways are used. And then finally, you might have secondary arrivals who were um, resettled in another area or another state that come to your agency for assistance and have complex medical needs, in which case you can also use, uh, you know, that might be a point in time when you refer to these two service providers. So I know it can be a little confusing to determine where you kind of fit into all of this as a resettlement agency and what your actual responsibilities are by participating in RHPP. And so I'm going to go over a couple of um, responsibilities that Volegs have, which kind of just will help you ensure that you are in compliance as a partner on this project. And so there's really three main things to cover. The first piece is to send overseas medical records and referrals to Harborview to triage cases and determine which cases need to establish care um, at either the International Medicine Clinic for Adults or the Pediatrics Clinic for Children. And there's a separate video presentation that covers the overseas medical records and how to determine a complex medical case, which may be helpful to you in sort of deciding or understanding which cases to refer. So I won't get too much into that here. Ideally, these referrals to Harborview would occur pre-arrival with the medical records that your agency receives in advance of resettlement. But I know that you don't always have these available um, before the case arrives. In that case, trying to send the referral as quickly um, after arrival as you get the documents uh, to Harborview if you think it's a complex case. Um, a second responsibility is to help coordinate the referral care and case managements of clients with Harborview and Refugees Northwest. And so the clients that you refer to Harborview um, and Refugees Northwest may or may not be in a longer term case management program through your agency, um, like the preferred communities program or the intensive case management program, if you have that, that program. But either way, there's gonna need to be some um, support and coordination to make sure that the, these referrals occur. Um, and for Refugees Northwest, this is usually just a warm handoff and making sure that the case gets connected with uh, a medical case manager at that um, agency. Um, 
for Harborview, you're more likely to be serving the case long term if you do have a long term case management program. And so your duties there might slightly shift in terms of really just coordinating with the Harborview team to make sure that you're all on the same page about the needs of the clients um, and, and, you know, making sure the client has rides to the appointment, making sure that referrals are followed up on uh, and other social needs are met. And then the final responsibility is to participate in RHPP meetings. And if you don't have an invite to this meeting, you can ask the lead at DSHS ORIA or the Department of Health Refugee Health Program for it. So now that we've talked about what RHPP is and sort of how resettlement agencies fit into the larger scope of the project, I want to end with some tips for how to use RHPP so that it's most beneficial to both you and the clients you're serving. Um, and so the first thing to really note is that the sooner you reach out, the sooner Harborview can start working on the follow-up needs for that patient. And this is really specifically for those um, complex medical cases that are arriving. Um, so ways to sort of make this process go more smoothly. I found that it was helpful to have at least one person assigned to review the medical records at your agency and if possible two. Um, this really just helps ensure that the review process of those overseas medical records consistently occurs and that you're really um, proactive about getting those records to Harborview for review. And if you're out unexpectedly or on vacation, having a second person available to who knows the process and can do this for you is really helpful. The second thing that I found beneficial when I was a caseworker was to create and set aside time to actually review the records. I found that in the chaos of casework and helping clients with things, I would sometimes forget to consistently check overseas medical records um, that are attached to the incoming arrivals list. And so I actually blocked off time in my calendar and really tried to stick to that as much as I could to ensure that I was doing this consistently and that no one was falling through the cracks. And the amount of time you put aside for this task really depends on the arrivals that your agency has at that time. So it could be as little as, um, you know, an hour a month or a half an hour a week. It can really vary, um, but just having that time on your calendar to remind you to check um, that helped keep cases on my radar and to make sure I was really consistent and thorough about reviewing them. And, and the danger of not doing this is that you could have a case coming in that has a really complex need. And if, and if you haven't caught it prior to arrival, if you have those records available to you, um, it can just be a lot more complicated and stressful to get that uh, case into the right care once they arrive. And then another tip I have is I found it really beneficial to create some type of tracking mechanism to just keep track of who I referred. And this was really simple. I think I created an Excel spreadsheet with the name of the client, the date of the referral, and the Harborview response. And so this became really useful during times when there were large numbers of arrivals and I was sending a lot of referrals to Harborview. And it really helped ensure that I kept track of every case and received a response about every referral. It also made it much easier for me to relay information back to the resettlement caseworker or to the other team members um, in your agency that, that might need updates about the case. It's, it's a lot easier when you have that, all that information in one place that you just have to look at. So another tip for how to use RHPP, and this may not be very common in your agency, but it's good to know. So your agency, if you're not aware of how assurance works, your agency has to assure every case that arrives, which 
basically means that the agency is accepting the case and can handle all aspects of resettlement for that case. So if you have an incoming case with high medical needs, you can actually ask for a review of the case by the state refugee health coordinator at the time of the assurance or prior to assurance. And this is really likely only needed for very complex medical cases, but it's just good to know that the state refugee health coordinator is there to just support you in ensuring that those cases have the smoothest resettlement process available and have all the supports in place prior to arrival. And so really what the um, state refugee health coordinator can do is help determine if you have the capacity to take on the case, help determine if you need additional information about a case before um, deciding whether to assure or not, and then also asking for a longer timeline for travel if that's needed for your agency to have some time to set things up well um, prior to the arrival of that case. And the state refugee health coordinator can also step in and speak directly to HQ, to your agency's HQ, or to PRM to really support you and advocate for you. So um, that's just something to keep in mind. It's not a regular occurrence in how you might use RHPP, but it does just give you another tool to ensure that you have all of the um, support that you need to help a case resettle um, successfully. Um, another thing I learned by using RHPP is how important it was to create an internal system within my agency for caseworkers to connect with whoever is reviewing the medical records and whoever is responsible for getting clients established at Harborview. I know this can vary from agency to agency and you um, might already have a system set up, but what I found is that RHPP duties don't necessarily align perfectly with resettlement tasks or intensive case management tasks if your program or if your agency has that program. And so regardless of how your agency is structured, it can be really useful to clearly define the roles um, internally around things like who is reviewing the records prior to arrival, who is who is sending the referrals to Har Harborview, who is arranging transportation, who is informing the family of the appointment, who is coordinating the ongoing care. And some of the ways to streamline these processes that I found useful and might work for your agency. Um, one was creating a monthly meeting with all parties involved to discuss cases or making that an agenda item on a meeting that's already scheduled. That just allows you to communicate um, really basic things like who you've referred or who has a appointment scheduled prior to arrival at Harborview um, with all of the team members that need to be updated. Um, if if creating a meeting isn't likely or doesn't work for your team, you can also just send a monthly or weekly email to all the teams involved to really clearly state who, what records have been reviewed, which have been sent to Harborview, which have been scheduled at Harborview. Um, and then from there, you can really coordinate all of those pieces and who is doing the follow-up. And then finally, at a very simple level, if neither of uh, the other two are possible, if you do create a basic tracking mechanism, like I mentioned above, you can simply share that with other team members involved so that everyone is clear about what's happening with that case. And I think clarifying these roles is not only helpful to the resettlement of the case, but it also does two other things. Um, if the health team or the team most engaged with RHPP is not present at the airport pickup or meeting the family within the first 24 hours, it can sometimes be daunting for the resettlement caseworker when they see a complex health need that's listed um, on the overseas records or uh, if the family you know, is really concerned about a health need of, of someone uh, in the case. And so discussing the case beforehand and sharing any notes or plans that you have for the case um, or that you've received from Harborview 
including letting the caseworker know if there's an upcoming appointment already scheduled. It can really help make sure the arrival goes smoothly and it ensures that they also have that information to um, offer the family. So being prepared and being able to say, yes, we know that this case, um, you know, you have a medical concern with this case, you're going to be seeing a doctor next Tuesday. That can just be really reassuring for both the caseworker um, and the family. And then the other reason I think it's important to make um, an internal system is to make sure that you don't duplicate services. Because if you're not clear with the resettlement caseworkers about a case needing to be seen at Harborview, they're likely going to treat the case as any other and a, as a routine case and schedule at a local clinic or harbor, uh, health point after arrival. And what happens then is unintentionally that case is um, establishing primary care both at health point and at harborview which can be very confusing for everyone involved and so while it might seem like a um, challenging task creating some sort of internal system for how rhpp is going to work within your agency can really save you time in the long run and then finally the biggest tip i can give is really utilizing the Harborview team. Um, I've used RHPP in the past to um, connect with the Harborview nurses and doctors to ask questions about health conditions. Um, I've referred many cases when I wasn't sure if the case was complex, asked advice about symptoms to look for upon arrival um, for cases in case you know, it need, the case needs to uh, go directly to the ER or to um, urgent care. And I would say the biggest lesson I learned while using RHPP from a resettlement agency perspective is that it's okay to over-refer. You're not wasting the team's time at Harborview, and they would really much prefer that you over-referred than under-referred. If you refer a case to Harborview and it doesn't need to be seen, that's a lot less work than not referring a case when they really need to be seen. Um, and realistically, of all of the cases that you refer to Harborview, not all of them are going to necessarily need Harborview's services. And so it gives you the peace of mind, it gives the resettlement caseworker the peace of mind that you have checked with a clinical professional around the health needs of that case. And so don't be shy about reaching out and making sure all cases are correctly screened or asking for help if you're not sure, because that is really what um, a piece of what Harborview's um, services are for this project. So to end the presentation, let's just quickly recap the three main messages. First, RHPP has two main services that resettlement agencies can access. One is the connection to complex primary care at Harborview, and the other is connecting to case management through Refugees Northwest. The second is it's okay to refer to Harborview for triage when you aren't sure how complex a case is and over-referring is much more preferred than under-referring. And then finally, streamlining internal processes for how to review overseas records and send in these referrals really ensures cases get care and care that they need in the right time frame that they need it. And it also reduces the chance of a duplication of services. If you're still unsure on how to determine if a case is complex, there is another video presentation on determining complex cases and reviewing medical records that may be helpful to you and your team.